What is going on everyone, my name is Jason, and this is One Week with the Galaxy S20 Ultra. So it's been a full week of me test driving Samsung's newest premier flagship smartphone, the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now this phone is interesting because the regular S20 and the S20 Plus represent the company's next iteration of their popular Galaxy S lineup, and they're both top-end devices in their own rights. So the S20 Ultra kind of is what some may consider the pro version of this phone. Let's put it this way. If you were to take a regular S20 and crank up almost every aspect of the phone, you'd have the Ultra. Now Samsung always runs the risk of being overshadowed by competitors who drop their flagships later in the year, and it looks like they wanted to have a phone that had all the knobs turned up to full blast to help mitigate that. And so far, I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with the Galaxy S20 Ultra. There are some components of this phone that are absolutely spot on incredible, and do set the bar very high for everybody else. On the other hand, there are some parts of this phone where my expectations were super high for, but have honestly missed the mark. Now I know it's only been a week, and a phone this expensive needs to be more comprehensively tested over time, but here's how my experience with the Galaxy S20 Ultra has been up to this point. Now before we get into the review, if you're into checking out the latest consumer tech products before you buy them, or if you're just a tech head like me, I make a video like this every single week, so make sure that you hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe so you can be the first to know when a new JSL review is out and you don't miss anything. And real quick, if you guys were to choose between the regular S20, the S20 Plus, or the S20 Ultra, which one would you guys go for and why? Curious to get your thoughts? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, first let's talk physical design because this phone is an absolute beast. Coming in at 76mm across and 167mm down, this even edges out the already large S20 Plus from a dimensions perspective, and it almost dwarfs phones like the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I mentioned this in an earlier review, but the S20 Ultra is a really tall phone, and it makes it almost unusable with one hand. It's also thicker and heavier than any Galaxy S device before it, making it quite a hefty thing to carry around. Now I personally don't mind the large size, there's definitely perks to it from a content consumption perspective, but if you have small hands and bulk isn't your thing, you're likely going to be off-put by the physicality of this device. Now in terms of overall build, it's top of the line as to be expected. Samsung continues to use the glass-on-glass -glass design with the metal frame, and it's extremely well put together. The only real design modification from previous iterations is that the display is less extreme with the curved edges. It's still there, but way less jarring and it makes for a more flat, yet still very immersive look, which is great. The buttons are also moved to the right side of the phone, which is good because that's where I'm used to having them. And yeah, there's nothing about the phone physically that I would say falls out of range from what I expect from a flagship device. But as the Ultra represents Samsung's turned up version of the S20, it would have been nice to see something different from a physical design perspective that differentiates the phone. Something like a frosted glass panel, the use of stainless steel or ceramic, or even just some unique colors. This phone only comes in black and gray. Anything that would have made the phone more distinct to make it more visibly Ultra would make it more appealing. Again, it's not to say there's any issues with the physical design, but with the premium you're paying for this phone, more attention could have been put on making it a bit more distinguishable. Okay, next, let's talk about one of my favorite features on this phone, the display. The S20 Ultra comes with a massive 6.9 inch Quad HD Dynamic AMOLED Infinity O display that rocks out at a resolution of 3200 by 1440, making for around 511 pixels per inch. Now Samsung has to me always led the pack when it comes to display quality, and it's no exception here because this display is gorgeous. Considering that the only real empty area where the display isn't being used is the tiny front facing camera cutout at the top, it's an extremely immersive display, especially when taking into consideration the sheer size of the device. Navigating around the phone and apps optimized to take advantage of this real estate make for an outstanding user experience, and it's really enjoyable. Samsung continues its trend of making its colors pop with high saturation and high contrast, and watching HDR high def video on this massive glass panel is almost awe-inspiring. Images are razor sharp, the true blacks of the OLED make for phenomenal contrast, and with native HDR10 Plus support, HDR content on this phone is truly on another level. Now I will say that it's immediately clear that the S20 Ultra more prioritizes vibrancy and saturation over accuracy, and some may be put off by that, but I think most consumers won't mind and actually will enjoy the artificially enhanced picture quality Samsung is kinda known for. Now as amazing as the viewing quality of the display is on its own, the real reason why I think this is the best display on any phone right now is its ability to support 120Hz refresh rate. Now yes, you do have to reduce the image quality to 1080p in order to take advantage of this feature, but oh man, is it worth it. The 120Hz refresh rate, to put it simply, is outstanding. It's complicated because it's not very noticeable on camera, but the smoothness of this display is immediately noticeable in person when using the phone. Everything from navigating around the UI, scrolling through apps, and even the transitions are so much more visually pleasing, and it really makes the entire user experience so much more engaging. 
Now the biggest challenge with the implementation of a fixed high refresh rate with a display this size is battery life. This is likely why Samsung went with a bigger, thicker design, as the S20 Ultra is packing a hefty 5000mAh battery, most likely to accommodate those who want to use 120Hz refresh rate all day. And it's only been a week, but so far the battery has been able to hold up. I could comfortably get through a day of moderate usage with the high refresh rate turned on, without having to charge in the middle of the day. And yeah, I have to tip my hat off to Samsung. They continue to deliver class-leading displays that not only look the best, but also provide the best user experience. Now before we get into the other features, I want to give a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives, lifelong learners, and for people who just understand that self-development is everything these days. Skillshare offers its members access to over 20,000 classes on topics such as illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, etc. I'm currently checking out this personal branding class that's legit awesome. It's extremely professionally put together, the content is robust, and it's genuinely been helpful for me to help define my purpose and in turn to find the content I want to create as a creator, and I'm really excited to put it into action as this channel grows. You can see it's all video guided and broken out by category of what you'll get from the class, you get access to all the resources to actively participate, and you can either start or add to conversations that are going on with other members. Now one of the things I love most about Skillshare is that the classes are really current and up to date on what creative folks are wanting to learn. There's a ton on how to edit video if that's something you've always been interested in, or how to start a YouTube channel of your own if you've got your own idea for content. Most classes are under 60 minutes long, so super flexible, and members get unlimited access to the entire portfolio Skillshare has to offer for an annual membership that's under $10 a month. Not only that, the first 500 folks to use the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership to check out the classes firsthand to see how incredible this platform and community is, Perfect timing for all of you who are in quarantine or social isolation and have been putting off getting that development that's going to launch your future career. Click on that link now to start learning. You're gonna wonder why you didn't start sooner. Okay, in terms of functionality and performance on the S20 Ultra, it's pretty close to top marks across the board. The base model I have here comes with the creme de la creme Snapdragon 865 processor, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of internal storage, expandable up to one terabyte using the micro SD slot here. Navigating around the UI is smooth and snappy, apps load almost instantaneously, what little gaming I do runs without any hiccups or lag, and I said this in my other video, but this is probably the most refined Android experience I've had on any phone. Basically anything you do on this phone just works, and works really well. Now my one gripe is that as much as I'd like the design choice of having an in-display fingerprint reader, the ultrasonic one that Samsung is using here seems as though it's the same from last year which again isn't bad because it's really cool technology, it's just a bit slow for my taste. I'm really picking at hairs here because it does work pretty well, and it's not egregiously slow, but it's definitely not the fastest biometric security measure out there, and it would have been good to see some improvements. Overall, for the past week, the performance on the S20 Ultra has been exemplary, and though there's small things to nitpick over, at the end of the day, it lives up to its name. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about are the cameras. Arguably what Samsung decided would be the biggest differentiating factor between the Ultra and the regular S20 models. Let's start with the front facing camera. It's a single lens that has a staggering 40 megapixel sensor and comes in at an f2.2 aperture and can shoot up to 4K 60fps video which is really impressive. And I'm happy to say that the images coming out of the front facing camera are pretty great. Selfies are sharp, there's a lot of detail being captured, and one of the things that I like is that the image doesn't do the mirroring thing when the picture is taken. It's composed the same way it is when you're taking the photo, and I'm impressed at how good the portrait shots are. Edge detection is on point, and it's coming off way more natural than what I've seen on older Samsung phones. Now it's pretty clear that by default Samsung is quite aggressively using some kind of beautifying image processing. Don't get me wrong, the selfies look great, but take a look at the difference between the S20 Ultra and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's definitely doing some skin smoothing and making my face look way whiter than it is. Now personally I think I look better on the image that the S20 Ultra took, but it's clear to me that it's processed and artificially enhanced. Now I'm going to venture that that's not going to be a big issue for some, and if anything it may be more of a bonus, but it's important to know. Okay, let's get to the cameras in the back. The S20 Ultra comes with four total, a primary 108 megapixel wide angle camera, a 48 megapixel telephoto zoom, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a depth vision camera. Now that's a crap ton of megapixels, and though it's important to note that bigger megapixel count doesn't always equate to better quality, the shots coming out of the S20 Ultra so far are pretty great. Samsung is probably the king at pumping out an image that is quote unquote the most eye pleasing right out of the camera. Images are sharp, colors are rich and saturated, great contrast, and the dynamic range is strong. Where the S20 Ultra really shines is with its optically zoomed in shots. The sweet spot for me is really 4x zoom, as the camera is able to get a really sharp image. 
Now I know that Samsung really tries to sell the 100 times zoom thing as a big deal around the S20 Ultra. And though it's interesting that you can zoom into that insane focal length, anything past 10 times zoom to me from a taking picture standpoint, is pretty unusable. It's so digitally processed and you could see how difficult it is keeping anything in frame. I don't see this being of particular value to most consumers. But overall, you get some really great range with the S20 Ultra's camera suite and majority of the shots look outstanding. Where I ran into some issues with the S20 Ultra is the focusing and in turn the video quality. To put it in a nutshell, it seems as though that the crux of the issue is that the S20 Ultra is using something called phase detection autofocus, which aggressively adjusts the lens between the background and the foreground to capture what it thinks should be in focus. The issue is that it has a really difficult time making a decision on what it should focus on, especially when shooting macro shots. Even when I tried to use a touch to focus here, it took a while before it finally realized what I wanted to get in focus. Now you can see in this 4K video sample that the sensor seems unsure of what it should be focusing on, and you're seeing a lot of hunting. This herky-jerky back and forth between focus, which really isn't pleasing to the eye. Now compare with this clip shot out of the iPhone 11 Pro, which uses dual pixel autofocus for much smoother, cinematic focus transitions, and it's night and day better. To be honest, I can't really understand why Samsung would use phase detection autofocus on the S20 Ultra when it's been using dual pixel autofocus for a while now. For shooting still images, it's annoying, but if you're serious about video, it's virtually a deal breaker. Now that could come off pretty harsh, but for a phone this expensive and hyped up for what the camera could do, this is a letdown that really can't be ignored. Okay, so the Galaxy S20 one week later, what are my ultimate thoughts? Well, I'll start by saying that I've really enjoyed using this phone. The display, particularly that 120Hz refresh rate, really enhances the user experience. And though you guys know that I'm not the biggest Android guy, my time with the S20 Ultra from a day-to-day -day usage standpoint has been fantastic. I really feel like a glutton consuming content on this phone, and though it's a bit cumbersome due to its large size, I've grown used to it and it's no problem for me. I do think it's pretty unforgiving the camera issues that I'm having. It's just funny because Samsung made such a big deal in hyping this camera, I'm really surprised they've released the phone with such a glaring error. And I'm almost at a point where I would recommend the regular S20 or the S20 Plus instead of going with the Ultra. But let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that the S20 Ultra is worth that premium price tag? Or do you agree with me that some of the issues that we're seeing here really makes this phone not worth it? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys find it useful. It really helps me out. If you guys have any questions about the Galaxy S20 Ultra, leave them down in the comments and I'll be sure to get to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.